The Flying Dutchman Long time ago, from Amsterdam, a vessel sailed away. As fair a ship as ever flung aside the laughing spray. Upon the shore were tearful eyes, and scarves were in the air. As to her, over the sootier sea went fond adieu and prayer. And brave hearts, yearning shoreward from the outward-going ship, felt lingering kisses clinging still to tear wet cheek and lip. She stared for some far eastern clime, and as she skimmed the seas, each taper mast was bending like a rod before the breeze. Her captain was a stalwart man, an iron heart had he. From childhood's days he sailed upon the rolling, sootier sea. He fared nothing upon the earth, and scarcely heaven feared. He would have dared and done whatever mortal man had dared. He looked aloft, where high in the air the pennant caught the blue, and every rope and spar and sail was firm and strong and true. He turned him from the swelling sail to gaze upon the shore. Ah, oh, little thought the skipper then to admit his eye no more. He dreamt not that an awful doom was hanging over his ship, that Van der Decken's name would yet make pale the speaker's lip. The vessel bounded on her way, and spire and dome went down. Ere darkness fell, beneath the wave had sunk the distant town. No more, no more, ye hapless crew, shall Holland meet your eye. In lingering hope and keen suspense, maid, wife and child shall die. Away, away, the vessel speeds, till sea and sky alone are around her, as her course she stares across the torrid zone. Away, until the north star fades, the southern cross is high, and myriad gems of brightest beam are sparkling in the sky. The tropic winds are left behind, she nears the cape of storms, where awful tempest ever sits enthroned in wild alarms. Where ocean in his anger shakes aloft his foamy crest, disdainful of the weakly toys that ride upon his breast. Fear swelled the winds and waters round the Dutchman's gallant ship, but to their rage defiance rings from Van der Decken's lip. Impotent they to make him swerve, their might he dares despise, as straight he holds his onward course, and wind and wave defies. For days and nights he struggles in the weird unearthly fight. His brow is bent, his eyes fierce, but looks of deep affright. Amongst the mariners go round as hopelessly they stare. They do not dare to murmur, but they whisper what they fear. Their black-browed captain awes them, neath his darkened eye they quail, and the grim and sullen mood their bitter fate bewail. As some fierce rider, ruthless, spurs a timid, wavering horse. He drives his shapely vessel, and they watch the reckless course. Till once again their shipwreck's laugh is flung upon the blast. The placid ocean smiles beyond, the dreaded cape is past. Away across the Indian main, the vessel northward glides. A thousand murmuring ripples break along her graceful sides. The perfumed breezes fill her sails, her destined port she nears. The captain's brow has lost its frown, the mariners their fears. Land ho! At length the welcome sound the watchful sailor sings. And soon within an Indian bay the ship at anchor swings. Not idle then the busy crew, ere long the spacious hold is emptied of his western freight and stored with silk and gold. Again the ponderous anchors weighed, the shore is left behind, the snowy sails are bosomed out before the favouring wind. Across the warm blue Indian sea the vessel southward flies, and once again the north star fades and austral beacons rise. For home she steers, she seems to know an answer to the word, and swifter skims the burnished deep like some fair ocean bird. For home, for home, the merry crew with gladsome voices cry, 
and dark proud Vanderdecken has a mild light in his eye. But once again the cape draws near, and furious billows rise, and still the daring Dutchman's love the hurricane defies. But wildly shrieked the tempest, ere the scornful sound had died. A warning to the daring man to curb his impious pride. A crested mountain struck the ship, and like a frightened bird, she trembled neath the awful shock. Then Vanderdecken heard a pleading voice within the gale. His better angel spoke, but fled before a scowling look, as mast high mountains broke around the trembling vessel till the crew with terror paled. But Vanderdecken never flinched nor neath the thunderous quail. With folded arms and stern pressed lips, dark anger in his eye, he answered back the threatening frown that lowered over the sky. With fierce defiance in his heart and scornful look of flame, he spoke and thus with impious voice blessed fiend God's holy name. Howl on, ye winds, ye tempests howl, your rage is spent in vain. Despite your strength, your frowns, your hate, I'll ride upon the main, defiance to your idle shrieks, I'll sail upon my path. I cringe not for thy maker's smile, I care not for his wrath. He ceased, an awful silence fell, the tempest and the sea were hushed in sudden stillness by the ruler's dread decree. The ship was riding motionless within the gathering gloom, the Dutchman stood upon the poop, and heard his dreadful doom. The hapless crew were on the deck in swooning terror prone. They too were bound in fearful fate. In angered thunder tone, the judgment words swept over the sea. Go, wretch, accursed, condemned, go sail ever on the deep, by shrieking tempests hemmed. No home, no port, no calm, no rest, no gentle favoring breeze shall ever greet thee, Go accursed and battle with the seas. Go, braggart, struggle with the storm, nor ever cease to live, but bear a million times the pangs that death and fear can give. Away and hide thy guilty head, a curse to all thy kind. Whoever see thee struggling, wretch with ocean and with wind. Away, presumptuous worm of earth, go teach thy fellow worms. The awful fate that waits on him who braves the king of storms. To was over, a lurid lightning flash lit up the sea and sky, around and over the fated ship, then rose a wailing cry, from every heart within her of keen anguish and despair, but mercy was for them no more, it died away in air. Once more the lurid light gleamed out, the ship was still at rest, the crew were standing at her posts. With arms across his breast, still stood the captain on the poop. But bent and crouching now, he bowed beneath that fiat dread, and over his worthy brow swept lines of anguish, as if he a thousand years of pain had lived and suffered. Then across the heaving, angry main, the tempest shrieked triumphant, and the angry waters hissed. Their vengeful hate against the toy they oftentimes had kissed. And never through the midnight storm that hapless crew must speed. They try to round the stormy cape, but never can succeed. And oft when gales are wildest, and the lightning's vivid sheen flashes back to ocean's anger, still the phantom ship is seen. Ever sailing to the southward in a fierce tornado's swoop, with her ghostly crew and canvas, and her captain on the poop. Unrelenting, unforgiven, and tis said that every word of his blasphemous defiance still upon the gale is heard. But heaven help the ship near which the dismal sailor steers, the doom of those is sealed to whom that phantom ship appears. They'll never reach their destined port, they'll see their homes no more, they who see the flying Dutchman never, never reached the shore.